In Sibelius, voices are independent lines of music in a staff, meaning that they have their own collection of beats, notes, rests, that kind of thing assigned to them. So far, we've been dealing with voice one. So if I press voice one and come over here and enter maybe some eighth notes, you'll notice that they're all blue. That's because they belong to voice one. If for some reason we want to add a second voice, first we make sure we're out of note input mode or edit mode by hitting escape twice. And then we can come over here and at the bottom of the keypad, you can see there are four numbers. So this shows us that we're on voice one. If we click this, now we're on voice two. Now we could go ahead and add some additional notes in here and you can see it gives us a complete additional voice from which to add these notes. For the most part, you're only gonna see on average about two voices per staff. You can have up to four voices, but most of the time you're going to have two here, and then maybe if you have a grand staff like a right hand of the piano and the left hand of the piano, you may have two vo additional voices on the left hand of the piano. But for the most part, you're going to deal with voice one and voice two. You probably noticed when I added the other voices, so for example, let's just do this again, that the stems flip. That is because Sibelius automatically will flip the stems when you add that second voice. Usually you want your upper voice or your higher notes to be in voice one and your lower notes to be in voice two. Um, so it's important that you don't flip using X before you start entering your second set of voices because Sibelius will take care of that for you just like it did a minute ago when I showed that to you. You'll notice that our two voices have two distinct colors. Voice one is blue, and you're most familiar with that because everything you've been adding to your scores so far has been voice one. And now we have green, which is voice two. If we wanted to add a third voice, we certainly could do that. And then also a fourth voice. Let's do some 16th notes. So there you can see all four of our voices. Purple, green, voice three was orange, and then voice one is blue. So you can hit N to get into note input mode. Like that, all I did was hit the letter N on the keyboard. And if you wanna change the voice that you are working in, you can use the shortcut option and then one, two, three, or four based on the voice that you want to enter. You can see my mouse right now, my cursor is changing color as I'm going option one for blue, option two for green, option three for voice three, and option four for purple or voice four. So those are the shortcuts you can use to enable you to enter um, specific voices, to enter notes as specific voices. You can see here I have voice one selected, or that's the voice I'm using to enter notes. If I hit N for note input, you can see we have the blue carrot now saying we're ready to add additional notes. And then I can also go option two, and now I could add additional notes in voice two without actually coming over here and using the keypad. So those shortcuts are really valuable for entering notes into different voices. If for some reason you want to go in and actually select or edit all of the notes in a specific voice, you could make a non-contiguous selection like that. But it's a lot easier to select the entire bar in this case, go up to the Home tab, Select, and Filters. And when you click on that, you can come down here and say, for example, Voice 2 only. That's what I want to have selected. So now... I could go in and place accents on all those notes for just voice two. So that's how you make selections 
and select specific voices if you have multiple voices in a measure or in a segment of a piece of music. 